gentlemen, the Trigaming Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing AMD's Zen processor, an upcoming processor, of course, for next year. There is an awful lot riding on Zen, as I'm sure you'll probably agree, and AMD are guaranteeing, or more specifically, an engineer at AMD are guaranteeing that x86 Zen is going to offer very competitive and high performance in comparison to AMD's own iterations of technology, plus Intel's as well, which is obviously what they're really shooting to do. They want parity, at the very least parity, with Intel's processors, because otherwise it's like, what's the point, unless they're going to enter the market at a lower price point and all that jazz. Everything is riding on Zen. This is according to Nathan Brookwood at Insight64. They are shooting for performance parity, where... Uh, arch rival Intel will be AMD understands that they have to succeed with Zen if Zen fizzles they will really have a lot of running around now continuing perhaps the most telling of comments is from Suzanne Plummer she's not just anyone she's actually a director of design engineering at AMD and she's actually a veteran she's She's now the uh, heading the Zen development, so she's got a pretty good idea of what's actually under the hood of the Zen, uh, the Zen juggernaut. It is the first time in a very long time that we engineers have been given total freedom to build a process from scratch and do the best we can do. It's a multi-year project with a really large team. It's like a marathon effort with some sprints in the middle. The team is working very hard but they can now see the finish line, I can guarantee that it will deliver a huge improvement in performance and low power consumption over the previous generations. Zen itself should be a beast, it really should be. Given the various performance slides that I'm sure we've all seen by now, it's got a totally new high performance core design, that's according to their own bloody leaf there. They've got new uh, high bandwidth low caching systems, they've got simultaneous multi-threading support, this is basically the way Intel does things, just for clarity's sake. In other words, the design is much closer to how Intel have done things, and ironically enough, closer to how uh, even AMD used to do things back in, say, the early Athlon days. People may remember the early, say, Athlon 750s and how they were really competitive. Even the Athlon 64s actually rabbit punched the um, Pentium 4, despite the fact it was running at a lower clock speed. and. Even to a degree, the Athlon XPs, despite the fact that yes, the Pentium 4 did have some advantages, particularly for creative applications for home users, let's say a home user did some video editing on the side, well, you know, the Pentium 4 was certainly a very compelling argument, but for the average gamer, the Athlon XP, or even the MP, was actually a really good process because it was actually fairly overclockable, it was cheaper, uh, and in the case of early Intel um, Pentium 4, it, they didn't have to worry about the RD RAM, which was prohibitively expensive. Now, regarding, once again, moving to the technical side of things of Zen, as I've mentioned, it's also going to be moving towards a single FPU design, um, which is much more Intel-like, the floating points, um, and as well as just the integer units have been drastically improved. It should be considerably better from what we understand. It's also going to be much more compatible with the ISIS of um, Haswell slash Broadwell. Um, and in terms of the actual specifics, from what we understand, per core of the Zen, we're going to have at least 512 KB of level 2 cache, and each four cores of Zen is going to have access to 8 megabytes of level 3. Remember, AMD like to do things in these modules, so each four cores of Zen will be classified as a module. Now, I do want to discuss probably some bad news, but it's not really so much um, AMD's fault, as it's just the reality at the moment of TSMC. So, this actually rides on the coattails of some stuff we reported with NVIDIA, and even to a degree AMD a while back in, in regards to their GPUs. Now, many hoped that Zen would be 14 nm, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Effectively, it's most likely going to be 16 nm FinFET. Why? It's what you'd expect. 
Unfortunately, 14NM is being a pain in the absolute ass. It really is. Um, and so you're getting situations where it's really expensive to produce the, the amount of silicon that you would expect a chip to be available in. Quite simply put, chip prices go up if, let's say, only half of your batch are useful. So let's, in the sake of then, let's say that you're aiming, and obviously we don't know the final clock speeds or anything like that, but let's just assume for the sake of argument that you need all of the 512 kilobytes of level uh, to cache and all the specifications that we've you know just talked about plus you need the chips to run it let's say amd to be for the sake of argument they need their chips to run at 3.6 gigahertz to be competitive or that's their that's their uh, you know their target but only 50 percent of those chips are able to do that on 14 nm obviously the prices go up a lot whereas on the other hand if let's say 80 percent of those chips run at that clock speed at 16 then obviously that's just how they're going to be unfortunately shrinking the process down is rather prohibitive in terms of cost and this is actually something we discussed with the whole nvidia situation at the moment sampling of their next generation pascal architecture is really expensive for nvidia so as we all know amd are aiming for the next year um, which is, you know, fair enough. Things should improve by then, but they probably won't have improved enough uh, for us to have switched to 14NM. I am actually really hopeful for Zen. Um, some people are saying that it's going to be, you know, around the same speed of Skylake, Skylake 6700K theoretically, which I'm actually in the middle of reviewing right now. But it really depends on pretty much any and everything. So, for example, theoretically, if we were to take single thread performance and we were to, you know, do some basic mathematics, one can argue that Zen should theoretically be on the Skylake 6700K territory. But... This all does depend upon the clock speeds AMD get to run it on because obviously if we're talking clock for clock but let's just say Zen runs 10% higher clock speed then you know Zen's the winner right and it will also depend on other factors as well for example you know how well does the chip or how well does the code leverage that specific architecture for example how well does it utilize caching and every other thing under the sun and in reality of course it also depends on the number of cores that the actual thing's going to have now we, what we do know is then will feature as i've mentioned smt um it's going to feature ddr4 which is pretty pretty in paramount and allegedly the cpu is going to go up to eight cores now that is critical because on a core for core basis, as we just said, yeah, it might be up to the performance of, let's say, 6700K, right? Let's say at the moment that processor on average costs 300, but next year it might cost a little less, what have you. The key, however, isn't that it will be as fast single thread, it's that it will have more cores available. And in reality, the only way for you to get that number of cores, that type of performance-ish on Intel is an X99. And that's going to be kind of expensive. So presumably, presumably, the Zen processor, the top-end one, the one that will have 8 cores, 16 threads and you know, all of that stuff, it will not cost anywhere near the $1,000 mark which uh, the 5960X come at, is currently retailing for. On the other hand, we don't know what Skylake E and any alternative processors from Intel will really feature. So it's just a bit of a, it, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a mystery at the moment as I'm sure you'll agree with us. Finally, since we know the, the performance of, well, not, I'm sorry, not the performance, that we know that 16NM is probably on the cards for Zen, we do know that at some point after that, I guess 2017, possibly 18, Zen Plus will be released. Now, we don't know specifically any of the major details yet. That's not to say we know that many details. 
Oh, I guess we know some about Zen, but we don't know. We know even less about Zen Plus. Now, Zen Plus, we've heard rumors that it's going to have 10 to 15 percent improved performance over Zen. Maybe that will be on 14nm. I guess that's a fairly safe bet, or maybe even smaller. I guess it just really depends on where TSMC are actually managing to push their technology at that point. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'm going to get going, so take care, have a great night, bye for now.